Matthew chapter 5 verse 27. He, and this is all the, the, the Sermon on the Mount. This is all, well, no more the modernistic Bible. What we're going to look at right now, you don't ever hear preached. This affects your movies, this affects your house, this affects your lifestyle, this affects your city or town. You have heard that it has been said in old times, Thou shalt not commit adultery. Now, we've, we've done earlier, Thou shalt not kill. And we're running back through the Ten Commandments. Now, Jesus said, Listen, I'm going to fulfill all the scriptures. I'm going to fulfill the law and the prophets. And he's bringing back to the reminder of the prophets. Now, we're going to learn later on that the Pharisees and Sadducees and, and, and those in, in, the, in the history of Israel have killed the prophets. And he will call them on them. So he, he's building up in the Pharisees and Sadducees. You know they're there. And they're going to raise opposition. All right, come on. Here's what the law says, and here's what you're not doing. And let me throw a thing, what we're looking at right now, adultery. Now, we don't know. But when they brought that woman to Jesus, who was, they said she was caught in the very act of adultery. That means she was in a, in a sexual position with the man. They probably brought her to Jesus naked. That's never preached. Where's the man? And there are some, even I, I mean, if you show me the proof, but I'm not going to say yay, I'm not going to say nay. But some will say, I will say, it's one of them. You know, they would lay the law down, but they wouldn't keep the law. And the condition of Israel is they are a sick, devil-possessed nation. And when he called upon these sins, this is what's going on. And we are in America today. We are a sick, devil-possessed nation who rejects God, rejects the things of the Bible and the ways of God. We're, we're going we're to come up with new sex identities. We're going to come with a new sexual marriage bed positions, all against God. We're going to have everything eliminate against God. Nothing new under the sun. Law says, thou shalt not commit adultery. But I say unto you, and you can just imagine, what's he going to say? How simple more can you get? Thou shalt not commit a adultery. Is he going to say, go ahead and do it? I mean, there have been religions coming out of California, USA. Orgies and oogies and, uh, you know, legalized marijuana, legalized. That's exactly what's going on in America. We're legalizing marijuana. We're trying to legalize uh, drugs. Next, you'll have legalization of prostitution, sex. And you can marry your dog. You say, impossible. They do it in Europe. There was a reality TV show that, that I watched. There was a woman. She was married to a Ferris wheel or whatever it was and called it George or whatever. And she was dead serious. And when the person said, eh, eh, she says, excuse me, you don't want to speak to my husband like that. It's a he. Ooh, they hate her today for the pronoun, pronouns. But I say unto you that whosoever, for God so loved the world that whosoever, that's anybody, everybody, Gentile, Gentile, Christian, we're going out of the realms of when, when when Jesus wants to say, "Hey, listen, this is this is outside the realm of Jewish." He says, "Whosoever you can nail this down on the Christian today, whosoever." How you like that one? You see, when Jesus wants it outside, when the Bible, the Holy Ghost wants it outside the Jewish, Hebrew, Israel people, he'll tell you. 
Jeremiah said, O earth, 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 a world, 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 okay, earth, 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 a world, 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 right this man childish. Whosoever looketh on a woman, okay, to lust after her. There's your pornography. There's your magazines. There's your computer screens. There's your movies. Now notice Jesus says lust. I mean, you could be walking down the street. Ah, there's a woman. Okay. That don't count. There could be, and how do I say it? There could be parts of a woman that she's advertising, and you could say, like, all right, that's not, it's like, I mean, I, I'll put it this way. You're at Daytona Beach, and you even have to be at the beach. You could be in the store. You could be at Walmart. And you see a woman's like, lady, get some clothes. That just does not fit. I've seen some women, I mean, they're wearing a bikini. It's like, a pregnant woman wearing a bikini. Like, oh, eh. <laughs> Now, that's not lusting. That's reality. I mean, you may see parts of the opposite sex and say, uh, okay. <laughs> I think that's what happened to David Bathsheba. David saw, Dave, uh, David saw Bathsheba, okay. Mm -hmm. To lust. He took that second or third look. And, and that's when, when you see a woman say, ooh. And he's getting... Desires and sexual so and pornography. You're looking. At, listen, you're not looking at pornography for an art class lesson. You're not buying the the the, the pornographic magazine for the articles. You're not whistling that woman on the street because you know just just to start whistling. You're not going to the topless bar just to have a drink because there's other bars. That Jesus said, when you look upon a woman and you lust, you got desires. Paul tells us in Romans, I believe it's chapter 8, lust and covet, covet and lust, they're the same. This goes with commandment number 10, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife. Whosoever looketh at a woman with sexual desires, and it's not your wife, Has committed adultery with her. <coughs> Excuse me. You don't have to get a motel. You don't have to get in the back back seat of a car. You don't have to get into a bed. You don't have to get in the floor. You don't have to get in anywhere. You can just look. It could be a computer screen. It could be a picture. It could look through the window. I know a woman, she's, her husband was, was always looking out the window at, at the neighbor's wife. And there were other things that committed adultery. Well, that's total. We got to realize preachers in the pulpits. All right. You may have a wedding ring. Okay, that's fine. You stood before a preacher, just as a priest, a captain of a ship, and, and the vows were said, you said I do, and you got a legal document that says you're married. Okay. Southern Baptist Church got a problem with the zipper. Preachers got a problem with, with, with eyes. I've never been to a preacher's conference. I've been, I've been, I'm interested in the ministry. I have studied for the ministry. I'm a, I'm a doctor of theology. I could be a preacher. I'm non-ordained right now, but somebody puts me in a church, you know, okay. I heard of these preacher conferences. I have been told by well-known preachers. I have been told by unknown preachers. These preachers will go to the conferences, and then when they check out, they'll go to the, hob the, the, the hotel or, the, or the, the motel lobby. They will pay for their own 
triple X fantasy X ray sexual videos they've been watching. So the church won't find out. And they've been known for preachers. If there's a if there's a topless bar, or a strip club, or whatever, preachers, and in their conference, have been known to visit those things. They're preachers who look at dirty, filthy pictures, purposely, wantingly. Your preachers and adulterers, according to God. And he, I didn't sleep with no woman. Was you know a president? Uh, well, that was about that was about marijuana. All right, I, I, I had no cynical, sexual intercourse with the woman. I don't care. Jesus said, "You you 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 profess to be a Baptist." Jesus said, "If you looked upon that woman and to be the sexual acts that were going on, you had to have a fantasies." Her evidence proved you had fantasies. You're an adulterer. And you didn't have to, you did not have to get naked. You can be walking down the street with your holding hands and hugging your wife and see a woman and do a double check. You're an adulterer. You see, preachers will put that, the, the class, of, you know, we're going to talk about divorce in a month. You know, the wedding ring in the ceremony. I've only had, you know, one ceremony. It don't matter with the ceremony. Jesus said, the Bible says, when flesh joins flesh, when the penis joins the, the female vagina, If you're not a married couple, you're committing fornication or you're committing adultery if one of you are married. Jesus goes in Matthew 5, 28, if you're thinking about it, if you have any lust, it could be even just a little fragment, <laughs> you're an adulterer. And friend, if, you're, if you are a male species of Adam, I don't care who you are. You have had that moment. And only Jesus Christ is not guilty. Of Every single living man, male, even from a child, has looked at a woman like, oh, who? Don't you tell me you never committed adultery. And notice it doesn't even say married. Whosoever looking upon a woman. You could be not married. She may not be mar not married. It's adultery. Forget about, you know, you go up and over fornication. Fornication is a, is a sexual act, premarital sex. You're not married. She's not married. That's fornication. That's not taught in the schools. In the schools, they teach. here's a condom. Here's how you put it on. And I witnessed that. I witnessed an instructor doing that in small engine marine class. Telling a woman how to put a condom on. Using a broom handle. At a high school. Well, techno school. Not high school, techno school. Now watch this. Had committed adultery with her. Lady, if you dress to please and dress to advertise, you dress to advertise your body parts. I don't know why a woman needs a tattoo above the crack of her butt. But if you're trying to advertise that butt, you put those words on your pants so they read your butt. You put that advertising on your breast for men to look. Why else would they put those words there? The lust of the eyes of the man. There are women 
who have dressed, who will stand before God, saved or lost. And I've seen it worse in, in Baptist churches. You have caught the men with your eye candy flesh. You have made them think thoughts of adultery. And God's going to charge you too. I could do this right now or 15 minutes in this one thing. I've seen some women in a Baptist church, and my God. I know I, I, I know a pastor's wife one time. I was sitting with my wife, and she bent over. And just, I was like, oh, my God. Really? Even my wife's like. He sees women there. They got the they got the dresses above the knees. And you look at you look at some of these women. Please don't bend over. I, I had I know it was a female one time dressed like that, and she went up to the altar and prayed, and you know, getting up from the altar, she pulled half her dress down. Hey, I may have been by accident, but No Christian woman, no woman at all should be showing cleavage. Your crack and your butt and all that. With her, she gets the charge too, sir. She's in that, she, she's been photographed like that. She's going to get that charge. One of the ministries we had is, is a chicken place. And they're a thing for, you know, women dressing. Man, I tell you how they dressed. And they get their picture taken. They get live models and all that. You go to that other chicken place and they and, and, and chickens don't have that big of a breast. God's going to charge those women for making the men look. I'm sorry to say this is 2022. God's going to charge those women for other women to look. In his heart. You don't have to do it with your flesh. It's in your heart, not your head. A porn, pornographic. You're not going to sell, sell pornographic in, in the perverse mind because Jesus said it's not the mind. It's the heart. I'm going to follow my heart. Oh, Jeremiah says the heart is wicked above all things. How could a person have all those filthy pictures of all those children like that? It's in the heart. You deal with it as a head. You got the whole wrong thing. All right, now look what Jesus does here. If thy right eye offend thee, in other words, you ought not to be looking Pluck it out. You got a problem with pornography? Cast it from me. So you can't see it no more. For it's profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish, an eyeball, and not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Now let me say, I know it's written to whosoever, but are you, you going to say that if a Christian looks at a woman and lusts after her and his heart committed, you say he's going to go to hell? No. Again, look who the audience he's dealing with. He's dealing with a group of Israelites, maybe some Gentiles are in the group. They're not saved. There's been no death, burial, and resurrection. But you can apply 528 because Paul says we're not to commit adultery. One step further, staying with the context of Matthew, you cannot go to hell if you look at a woman with adultery or even involved in pornography. Our sins are under the blood. Our Father would chasten us or you will get ashes. You don't get hell. Well, we're going to run to Matthew. It's the church all year. We're going to run to Matthew. We're going to run to Matthew. We're going to run to Matthew. Once saved, always saved. A Christian will never go to hell. All right, why don't you do 529? 
Because at the point right now where Jesus is, if, if an Israelite, if a Gentile there is looking at women and, and involved in, in pornography, you just better pull that eyeball out because if you're to die, you're going to hell. Jesus hasn't died, he hasn't been buried, hasn't rose again from the dead. All right, if thy right hand offend thee, oh, what's that one? First Corinthians 7. First Corinthians 7. I hope it's 7. I was supposed to look it up. Good, it is. First Corinthians 7, we don't get far. Verse 1. Now, concerning the things whether you wrote unto thee, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, all right, there's fornication, sex before marriage, let every man have his own wife, let every woman have her own husband. You know what one of the things marriage is? So you don't fornicate. You know what Paul said to the church, to the Christian we're reading to? Don't even touch it. If it ain't your wife, don't touch it. Go back to, go back to Jesus. Matthew 5. I was, uh, here we go. We, we can apply this to the Christian, but I mean, don't go popping your eyeballs out. We got the blood of Jesus Christ. We got confessing. We got saying no to the flesh. First John uh, 1 John 1 or 9, 1 9. And then prayer. Fighting. But he says, I right hand, verse 30, cut it off. Paul says not to, again, who's he talking to? He's talking to a whole unsaved nation. If you died right now when Jesus is speaking, if you died before Calvary, and, and pornography will send you to hell. Adultery will send you to hell. Adultery has no offering in the Old Testament. That's the law. I know what David did. David had special from God. For it's profitable unto thee that one of thy members should perish. Your arm. And not that the whole body should be cast into hell. Look what he said there. He says the whole body, not just the soul. Well, when you bury the body, it don't go straight into hell. He's talking about the resurrection day. The resurrection, when you're judged and the books are open and you're cast in the lake of fire. But, gee, did, haven't we seen hellfire? Didn't we see that? Hell, hell. All is not well. Jesus said there's a hell. What's the Jehovah Witnesses say? Hell is the grave. Hey, you know what they do? How they do that, Mr. Pastor? You know how they do? They run to the Hebrew and they run to the Greek. And when you tell your people, in the Greek it says this, in the Hebrew it really means this. You're doing what the Jehovah Witnesses are doing, and you're giving your church members. Okay, if I want to find a, if I want to find a means to sin, let me run to the Hebrew and Greek. After all, my pastor does it. My pastor, hey. We can access Webster's 1828 20, dictionary online. We don't have to pay the 18 or 24 bucks. We can even get Webster's uh, dot com. I do it. If I don't do Webster's 1828, I do dictionary.com. I can type in a word, look it up, and if I want to get the synonym or the antonym, I got I just press one tab and boom. The Hebrew and the Greek that your pastor tries to make everybody look how great I am. I'm super P. Put on a shirt. Super P. Because I know the Hebrew and Greek. <laughs> Take that Greek and go over to Greece, speak that Greek, and they'll be looking at you at. Hmm? Hmm? You know, we know English. We don't speak the king's English anymore. <laughs> 
Have you ever got yourself the original King James Bible in the English? <laughs> the F's are S and then. <laughs> okay. It has been said, Whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a right of divorce. That's in the law. That's in the law. And the law, we're not going to look at it for time, but in the law, if, if you have any occasion, you find un uncleanness with her. You marry her and she picks her nose. <laughs> you marry her and she can't cook. You should have found that out by now, but. Uh, I marry her, she's snoring, oh, man, she keeps the whole neighborhood away. The law states, Mr. Free, oh, oh, the deadliest sin ever is the divorce. <laughs> How dare you speak again? Mixed marriages because I'm mixed marriage. <laughs> yeah, okay. But, so, uh, writing a divorce. All right, Jesus is going to settle the court, the court case here on divorce. He said, hey, write a divorce. You want to give her a right of divorce? The law said, and they said, hey, you want to give her a divorce? There you go. You, you, and you did whatever procedures set forth to give your wife a divorce. But, <laughs> I love in the Bible when God says but. <laughs> because God is about with his buts. He's going to throw a monkey wrench. And the little engine that could, God's going to throw that monkey wrench and the little engine can't. No more. We need to pay attention to God's butt. Get your eyes off that woman's butt and get it on God's butt. You know, it's funny, Americans, even Chris, they make fun of those those, those, those pukas or no, the, the, the the garbs of the of the Muslim women. You make fun of that, okay? What are the chances of a Muslim man looking at a woman Muslim with her outfit, committing adultery with that woman by looking at her, where you compare with American and how women dress in America? How about the Muslim? I mean, uh, uh, they practice some things where, you know what, uh, Americans need to practice. Christians need to practice. You know, it's funny, these religions and their cults, and they are a cult. Some of them, you know, if you were more dedicated to God and the gospel like the, like the Jehovah Witnesses are, I am 54, going to be 55, or 53, going to be, I'm 54 or 50, no, I am. It's after September. So I'm either 54 or 55. I don't even know anymore. I don't know how many Jehovah Witnesses I've had knock on my door. Okay? I've never had a Baptist knock on my door. Daytona Beach, Port Orange, Ormond Beach, Norwich, Connecticut, New London, Connecticut, Waterford, Connecticut, Mystic, Connecticut, Groton, Connecticut. I've knocked on doors, Ledger, Connecticut. I went to people's doors. We didn't knock on doors. We left leaflets on doors of Norwich. I'm pretty sure my son agrees that uh, we think primarily we did 90% of Norwich. We've been to places in Norwich, and my wife was like, oh, never even knew there was even this place there. There are places in Norwich, we went off the grid. <laughs> okay? And I got off on that one. Right in divorce. Man. But I say unto you, just as Jesus, red letter, you got a red letter Bible. Wish my Bible was red letters. 
whosoever. 31 was whosoever. 28 was. So this is written to anybody. You can apply this to the Christian. Don't go poking your eyeballs out. Don't go cutting off your arm. Quit the sin. Well, you know, when Jesus spoke what he did in 29 and 30, there are some things in the Bible we're not to take literal. Okay? That which is to be taken literal, people don't take literal. That which is not to be taken literal, they take literal. When Jesus gave to us in John chapter 6 the illustration of the bread, the Catholic Church turned it literal and said, this is, the, this is the body and blood of Jesus. That's not what it was supposed to be. Whosoever. That's the same whosoever found in John 3. That's the same whosoever, Revelation 20, was not found written in the last book of life. Whosoever shall put away his wife, okay, you're going to put her away. Joseph was going to put her away. She was pregnant, but not by a man. Here we go. Saving for the cause of fornication. Jesus said, I think he's the final authority. This is out of the mouth of Jesus. If your wife has stepped out of your marriage, you have the option of God. I'm done. Here's your divorce. Or pretty much, uh, you can try to work things out and forgive them. And I'm not going to say, you know, people say forgive and forget. It's hard to forget. I'm sorry. Jesus said, when a wife steps out and joins flesh with another man, That is an act for her husband to say, here's a divorce. But, what did Jesus say in John? And I forget, I forget what the number is. She says, I have no husband. I'm not going to quote because I forget. She says, yeah, I know you don't have no husband. You've got four of them. And the one you're with right now is not your husband. Now, wait a minute. How can she say, yay, I have no husband? Jesus said, yeah, but the one you're with right now is, is your fifth. Because the Bible acknowledges that through a marriage, there is some kind of civil law. If the law of your nation or state, whatever it is, says in order to get married to the woman, you got to stand before a preacher with one leg in the air. If you don't stand with a preacher with that one leg in the air, you're not married. Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and it was not official until the father set forth the feast. And the father gave the bride, literally gave the bride to the groom. Wrong one. There are official documented rules and laws and regulations. You can go on a ship and ask the captain to marry you and your wife or your wife and your husband. If you have decreed a, a application for marriage, a captain of a ship, as far as I know, 
could perform the marriage and sign that paper and it would be legal. You can run to Las Vegas, as far as I know, and you can go to that chapel. And as long as you have the official documentation, that man has been ordained by the state of Nevada. I have married these two. And, and most preachers, I, I believe they would say, I have been ordained, I have been certified by the state that you're in. I pronounce you man and wife. You kids cannot run out like California and it's, and we're, it's free love and free sex and we're living together and then you know what you know I don't like you no more get out of my house uh, now there's also a rule in the book which many preachers don't like but is a rule in the book that if you live with somebody for X amount of years it's called a common marriage common law marriage. What Mary and Joseph did or had to do to be married, they were married before they came together. Romans 13, obey the powers that be. Most, the United States, I believe, is you go down to your city hall where you're going to get married. You file for application. You pay the application fee. Some states require blood tests. Some require none. Some you have to go for the whole. Whatever your state requires for you to do. And if you don't do it for whatever reasons, if it's not exempt by the law, then, you know, you're not married. Well, you know, what do you do? And somebody, what do you do if you lost your marriage license? You go down to the city hall where you got married or the state you're living in, and you can get a copy for about fifteen to twenty dollars of your marriage license. Don't try to throw that one out the window. Here is a woman. She is married. She has stepped out on her husband. Now, it's interesting because we're going to slide myself over if you saw that. Now, we're going to look up the word fornication. Everybody knows about adultery. Yeah, my computer is just acting up. Maybe not. And we want Webster. Where's Webster again? What are they doing now? Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Ready? The incontinence or lewdness. Lewdness. Run that to 528. Of unmarried persons, premarital sex, male or female. Also, criminal conversation of a married man and an unmarried woman. <laughs> You're writing love letters to each other. You're not married. Adultery. Look at that. Look at that. Well, look at Webster's 1828 Dictionary, Mr. Baptist Preacher. Webster's 1828 Dictionary quotes the Bible, Matthew 5. Well, gee, I want fornication to mean. Fornication means adultery. Look, oh, look at Matthew 5. Did your Greek and Hebrew say that? All right. Incest. 1 Corinthians 5. That's family members. Idolatry, forsaking the true God, worshiping idols for 2 Chronicles 21, Revelation 19. Ooh, there's a good one. You can charge the Catholic Church with fornication. Premarital sex is fornication. It's funny how a woman married, Jesus didn't say adultery. He said fornication. It's like 
once that woman joins that man, that marriage is done. Don't even count it. You are premarital sexing. Whosoever puts away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causes her to commit adultery. All right, you get rid of her because you just don't like her breath. She's being charged with adultery because of you. She is older and going through her menopause. And you don't like it. You get rid of her. You charge her with adultery. You want to be free, fancy free. You're 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 living your midlife crisis. You want to get rid of her. You are charging her with adultery. You're causing her to come in adult. What you're saying? What you get rid of her? She's going to go find somebody else. She's a woman. And whosoever, Jew, Gentile, or Christian, shall marry her, that is divorce, commands adultery. What do you do? There are many Christians out there, they married a person who... I married a woman, divorced, on biblical grounds. Her husband, she said, committed adultery on her with another woman. She got a divorce. We were thrown out of another church. Not even asking what the divorce... Oh, she was divorced and... There is a biblical grounds for a divorce. And you cause that woman and the one she marries to commit adultery. Where have you, com where have you committed to her, stayed with her, put up with her, patience and all that, Under the law, there is, was, no sacrifice. Today, like I have done, you go before the Lord and you confess it as a sin. You put it under the blood of Jesus Christ. But you cannot condemn a husband or wife who divorced if their spouse has been unfaithful, there, there it is. You can't condemn a husband or wife who has been given a divorce by their spouse beyond their recognition. Because there's no guilt but to the party that gave the divorce. And then we move on, which we're not going to tonight. Then you move on oath. Again, you've heard, well, look, I just want to show you something. That it has been said by them of old time, thou shalt not forbear thyself, but thou shalt perform the Lord thy oaths. You swear to take this woman to be your awful wed wife? I do. You swear to take this man to be your awful wedded husband? I do. You just made an oath before God, before the preacher, the ship captain, the, the notary public, or whoever it was, before your family and friends. You have to have, you know, listen, the state, you, you have to have at least two or three witnesses. And when you run off to get a divorce, you lied before that. Whoever performed the ceremony, you lied to your spouse. Thou shalt not bear false witness. And you lied to the witnesses, whoever they be. 
And when you sign that marriage certificate and he signs that, you lied to the state and county that you because because they're giving that license. Hey, you're going to make, we know you're going to make an oath and you, we know you're going to say I do. It's funny how we work adultery to divorce to an oath. In that order. Now, if you are a Christian in your church, you never heard this, and you are a product A or B of a divorce, you need to repent of your sins. If your spouse has not remarried, when you go check the law, we're not going to. You cannot divorce somebody under the law. Go and marry somebody else, and they get a right in divorce. That's the law. And then go back to the original partner. That's a violation of law. That's an abomination. But if you got a divorce and your spouse remain unmarried, you remain unmarried. The proper thing to do is get back together and try and make things meet. And if not, make it a separation, not a divorce. Because a marriage can be separate. You know, because you know what? We just need to get away from each other for a little time. No, I don't go after somebody else, and you don't go after. Just need some space. That's Bible. That's in Corinthians. Lord will we ever get there. No recommendation ever for a divorce. And even if there is fornication, adultery, try to, if you can, make men's meet, make it right, forgive, and it's going to be hard to forget. You say, well, what if the husband beats her? What if the wife? That would be a separation. Try to make things right. Try to see anger management. Try to make that marriage work. Jesus didn't say, you know, for saving the cause of being beaten. Because the cause, if we go back into the law, if the cause for that would be, is if the husband's beating the wife, the law would be you take the husband and kill him. But you're not going to do that in America. You're a civilized nation. One nation under God. Yay, let the, let the abomination run. Let them pray down the street. Run the divorce in, in in Hollywood where everybody watches and glamorizes and Tony red carpets and Oscar. Oh, look at and look how many times this actress has been divorced and married. Oh, yeah. See, America glamorizes. It's a sin. And if it's happened to you, get it right with God. If you can, get it right with your spouse. <laughs> and if a preacher, and they do, they will, so if the preacher hangs it over your head, just you got to go find somewhere else. But don't forget, that preacher has, has skeletons in his closet, too. It's, like I said, I married a woman getting a divorce. She told me her husband was cheating on her, and I went by her words. I've had some doubts. And all I can do is just plead the blood. Plead the blood. There's nothing but the blood of Jesus. At least one thing with God. God will forgive and he will forget. I've had an illustration in my family. I've forgiven the person. I can't forget it. The only way I'm going to forget what happened with the violation, I get Alzheimer's. I 
maybe that's me. I don't know. Maybe I'm a sin. You know, you ought to forget. Okay, maybe. And how many times do you rag that person by something you keep bringing up from the past? Yeah, it's not something I bring up in the past. It's just whatever. It comes up. I try to get rid of it as quick as possible. But you, you can't say every single divorce is sin after what Jesus just said. Now, you go out and you two just get a divorce because you want to have other... Okay, that's a sin. That's wrong. You don't, you want to live together without getting married and all that? That's wrong. You can't go by the definitions of America, you know, premarital sex, affair, and all that. It's fornication or it's adultery. You say, well, we're gay, we're lesbian, and all that. It's an abomination. That's your three tenses. The fourth tense of sex is marriage bed. You're either doing it right by the marriage bed, husband and wife. You step outside your wife or your husband, that's adultery. You have sex before you have a legal marriage, that's fornication. You have a male and a male, or a female and a female, or you're doing it with animals or things, whatever you're doing, it's abomination. That's it. End of story. Nothing else. Tell Hollywood to shut up. You know what the leading clause of uh, uh, what do you call it? Abortion? Yeah, we know. No, 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 no. The leading cause is abortion is you ought not to have been fornicating or you not have been adulterating. Very rarely a husband and wife get together and, you know, they're going to get rid of a baby. I mean, yeah, that should have been talked about before the I do's. And today you can do, you can have protective sex and you can have oper, well, I don't want the operation. Well, yeah. huh. Okay. Okay. Plain and simple. 